All right, guys, I'm uh, here with Josh at the foil shop, one of my favorite places to hang out and uh, check out gear. I just wanted to pick his brain on this, this lesson in the how to wing foil series is what gear do you need specifically boards, foils and wings? What have you guys been using to teach people? You know, when people are starting out winging, we recommend a board that's big enough for your body weight so that you can kneel on the board comfortably. I like the knee start approach. You don't want to be too small, so you need to be able, it needs to float you. But then also I'm making sure you don't get something that's way too big because then that can feel a little bit like an orange on a toothpick when you actually get up and flying. I sort of agree with that. Like I'm a big fan of the knee start and using the wing for power and that's your stability. The traditional thinking is 20 liters over your body weight in yeah. kilograms. For example, if you weigh 180 pounds, that's 82 kilograms, suggesting a starting board around 100 liters or so. But if you're looking for something that you're going to be able to advance with, if you can get closer to your body weight in kilograms, that's probably better and you can use the knee start yeah. to do that. It's going to hold you back a little bit on doing the taxiing maneuvers like jibing without being on foil, but it will be better for your foil riding. And I actually think that 20 liters over your kilos is exactly where I'm putting people. Okay. So like I'm, I don't know, I'm 160 pounds. What is that? 70 kilos or something like that? Mm -hmm. 72. I would still recommend a 90 to 100 liter board uh, for someone like myself starting out. And that is enough that I can actually, learning to wing on a flat place like Cabrillo where you teach, I can actually stand up on that and wait for some wind. Not very long, I still could fall off, but most people are in open water. There's a little chop, maybe they're just past the surf zone, something like that. So learning that knee start I found was really important to tell people, learn how to knee start, it's gonna be your number one go-to move you know, throughout your experience. Uh, absolutely, I, I agree. Like for me at 200 pounds, like maybe 120 liters is probably a better starting size. Yeah. Now that being said, don't be afraid to go bigger. If you're older, if you're not in shape, you have knee problems, you need a board that's gonna be stable. And it might be a little bit harder to get that board out of the water, but you might take a little bit more time to learn how to jibe on taxi before you're even foiling, how to go up wind. So in doubt, go bigger. I know everyone's moving into these downwind boards right now. So that is not what you want to learn in my opinion. I was just helping a foiler out the other day learn to wing. He's a good foiler and he was trying to learn on a downwind board in some choppy water and he was struggling. He went out the next day on a regular board, a traditional board, and he was killing it. Yep. So we'll show you the downwind boards. And here's Patrick looking at one of the code guys downwind boards. It's very long and skinny, which makes it efficient, but it's also very tippy. Here's the AFS Blackbird. Beautiful board, but not something I think you should learn to wing on. The only way I would recommend a downwind board is if you live somewhere with just like absolutely no wind and you want to suffer for a while so that you have something. Maybe you're in San Diego and you want a downwind board. You know, we don't have them in stock right now because they're being built, but there are there is a hybrid version of that. The wing boards that are getting a little narrower and a little longer are helpful for release off the water. You don't have to go to a traditional nine foot, 120 liter long board. You can go with a 100 liter board that's maybe six and a half feet and just a little bit pulled in, but those are second and third boards. These are not first boards. Your first board, you want width, you want stability, because you're gonna spend a lot of time dropping into the water and then having to get back out. So get a board that allows you to get up and down in and out of the water as you're learning your jibes, your taxis, and all these things that you gotta just have under your belt, get an easy board. When you're done and you're ready to upgrade to your next board, that board is not gonna be obsolete. It's not an outdated piece of gear. It's gonna be great for your family to learn on. It's gonna be great for light wind days, trickier conditions. If you wanna do a downwind and you wanna know that you're like safe and comfortable, you don't have to deal with your gear, you're always gonna feel like you can go back to that board. And even you were saying in some conditions, you pull out your bigger boards again. You know what oh, I mean? Yeah. And it's just really helpful. So don't be afraid of the bar of soap. Even though everyone's moving away from it, you might too. We made that shape for a reason, right? Uh, it's, it's great. I, I, I still prefer that shape, just period. I'm not a downwind guy, but that's just me. With these people moving to the downwind boards, you can find some used boards online that might be a pretty good deal. Also, Josh has some boards. He can get you 
probably almost the same price as some of these people are trying to sell used gear at. Some of these people are a little wild on some of these prices they're putting their used gear at. Yeah. If you can find a good deal on a board, do it. Sorry, Josh. But I know you have a couple of boards in yeah. here that are perfect for learning, especially like you got a couple hundred liters. Can you get a good deal on that? Yes. So we're in the process of trying to kind of clear out everything that we've had all year. Um, and we're also helping some of the manufacturers do that. I've got a brand new board from NSP. You're, you're like under $600 for a board like that, you know, for a, a brand new board. You know, we've got Takuma, um, the EBS, it's like, it's like an epoxy and uh, bamboo sandwich construction. So EBS stand for, and that board it was originally a thousand bucks. It's getting down in the 750 range now. It comes with foot straps, all that. That's a, so. that's a really good, oh, and I, you know, we'll talk about foot straps and stuff later. If you're a windsurfer, I learned with foot straps day one. If you're not a windsurfer, I wouldn't do that. But if I was a little bit looking for stability, I would probably get that Takuma because it's a, maybe a little bit wider, I think, and it's got that bulbous nose. And if you want something that's maybe a little bit more fast through the water, maybe the NSP. That's kind of my thought, just looking at them. And the NSP is gonna be something that like, if multiple people are gonna learn on it, the tracks are farther back. I guess I said something wrong here. I said Takuma, but it's Takuma. <laughs> Takuma. We've it's got, a Takuma. We got we the have... peanut gallery. It's just going to be your board. If it's, uh, then I would recommend the Takuma. As you progress, the Takuma will become a better option. The tracks are a bit farther forward. It's a more of a long-term solution. NSP makes great boards and they build them with schools and lessons in mind. So the tracks are a little farther back. It's a little more stabil stable. Multiple people can continue to learn on mm. that board uh, over and over again. Gotcha. And then, so if these sizes don't fit the viewer's needs, can they just contact you and you'll yeah. get them the right size, you'll we've order got, it for them? We've got a really small shop. This is basically what you see is what you get as far as square footage here. So we've got a lot of opportunities. Um, we drop ship stuff directly from manufacturers. We've got warehouses nearby. We're really resourceful. Uh, we just might not have it all out on the floor. This thing was used for a couple of weeks by a customer of mine that got a foil drive and needed a nice big board to learn on. This is a board that even Rob, if he wasn't doing backflips, was talking about would be a great board to ride in certain circumstances, yeah. even for him as an advanced rider. But a lighter guy like me, this is actually, after you've just had five or six sessions, this is a great board. And because it was put in the back of the pickup truck and it just has a couple scratches on the nose, I mean, somebody's gonna save, you know, three or four, five hundred dollars off of retail, you know, for a board like this. Yeah, it's used, but it's not, used for a season no. it was used for a couple sessions and it's and you've looked over it and made sure like yeah, it's, it's watertight is i actually board. really like this board i like the fact that it's got the the really bulbous nose as you get smaller in size i really love this it keeps yeah. the board from from nose uh from tombstone as you're trying to start i've seen a couple of my customers come in here and say hey can you help me set up my foil i just got a new board or whatever i got it on craigslist and they come in and they're bringing me boards that they just bought they paid 300 dollars for a board and the box is are pulling out or have already pulled out. And I look at it and said, those boxes just got glassed back in. It's already been destroyed. And you got a waterlogged, nasty piece of trash, right? And I could have sold you something for, I could have sold you something for like $200 more and it would have been brand new, you know, ready to go. Yeah, here's, here's the thing guys. It's really tempting to buy gear online uh, off of like, some random site that you've never heard of because you get like a hundred dollars off. The reason that's not a good idea is because one, if anything is broken or you need to like figure out how to use it, who are you gonna talk to, right? Also imagine, yeah, you break a piece of your kit on the way to the beach or you lose something. Where are you gonna go when you wanna ride that perfect day? It's a, it's, it's five to six foot clean with 20 mile an hour side store wins. You don't have your gear. Like some off brand, like what? doesn't have a reputation type. Well, no, I just gear. mean like, what are you gonna do when there's no local shop for you to go pick up that piece of gear you need? Yeah, you, yeah. You know what I mean? a connection with whoever you buy from is a great, it, great way to go. These are the people who are putting in the work to grow our sport and to grow our community. And it doesn't make sense to save a few bucks and then not have a local shop. I don't think it does, yeah. especially if it's someone like Josh who's actually giving you a good deal. Yeah, It's crazy to try and save 25 bucks. And honestly, I don't know that you can beat Josh's prices online. I really don't think you can. There's some other retailers who you might be able to beat, but I really don't think you can. So that's just a little aside. 
another little advertisement for Josh. Okay, we talked about boards. I love talking about boards, but this is the foil shop. And honestly, this is probably the most important part of your kit. And I think that's why you're called the foil shop too, right? You gotta have a good foil. Okay, so what are you guys doing for beginner foils? So I am very much against a throwaway piece of gear. Okay. I don't want anybody to buy something that becomes obsolete for them. I want it to become a staple piece of their quiver that just maybe it just turns into light wind gear. We were talking actually earlier off camera about um, the big ginormous foils and when does that come into play? You could have a different school of thought than me, but I typically try to find something that has a lot of lift and has enough lift without being too oversized. My winging journey, I started on a giant foil. It was like 2,000 square, I don't know. It, it was huge. Yeah. And um, I used it for one and a half sessions, and then I was, boom, onto a different foil. And um, even that one, and then I used that for like two sessions, and boom, I was onto a smaller foil where I found a sweet spot where it's like I can get up in any type of wind and all that stuff. So I recommend, I really think there's a lot of good gear that was made about a year ago where you've got this 200 square inch, 1300 square centimeters, 1500 square centimeter range. You've got a Takuma Helium, makes the 1750 and a 1500. Mm -hmm. That kit is insanely good. You can get great deals on that. We've got the AFS kit over here. Yeah, and I think that's actually what I'm picking up for the lessons is you just showed me this. It's, a, it's all carbon, right? Yep, it's all carbon. all carbon and it's a really good price point. I agree with you. I learned on like the, the Infinity 99, which is a big, low aspect. It's about a meter wide, 99. Yeah. Um, and I thought it was a great foil for learning. One of the things I liked about it was because it had the rounded edges, um, which I think is nice for learning. But I do think now you're getting similar lift out of much smaller foils mm -hmm. that are the same width. This foil that I'm picking up for my lessons is pretty much the same width as Infinity 99. And they're also with the wider foils, they're also very stable, yeah. right? Yep. Let me grab it. Yeah. Right, you might have a scoot in front of you here. Here's an example of wing. The, the, the foil, foil wing that we, I was showing you earlier is basically the same size. This is an Ono Swift 200. A lower aspect foil uh, in, in the past, you know, just had not quite as much wingspan. You're getting a lot of stability and a lot of early lift out of a foil just like this. And you can get a great deal on a foil kit like this. Yeah. All carbon. Everything's great. It's top of the line stuff. It's just not this year's model. I've done Ono foil reviews. I think they're one of the most underrated foils out yeah, there. They're fantastic. They really are so good. You get some of your lift from this profile, the thickness, mm -hmm. and then it's very stable. And then the AFS, same thing. It's a very similar They've got foil. a kit really similar. Um, uh, who else has it? Uh, Takuma with the helium product. That's a little bit more low aspect, right? It's uh -huh. a little lower aspect. But that's a great entry into winging where you get an aluminum mass, but it, it's actually a really sleek kit. You know yeah. what I mean? So there's all, all sorts of different options on the foil where it doesn't become a throwaway product. I actually have tons of customers that talk to me about their Takuma Helium foils and they, they love them. They've had them for a couple of years and they're, they're, they're using them all the time. Now, on the other hand, if you did want to go the throwaway foil route, the Infinity 99 will absolutely teach you how to foil. I learned on it. I sold mine for 350 bucks. I wouldn't pay anything more than that because like I said, it's a throwaway foil and I wouldn't get the 84 or the 76 because I don't think they're very good foils, but you will absolutely learn how to foil on the Infinity 99. It's got a ton of lift, especially if you're a big rider. So it is an option. What price points are you talking about for like a brand new foil? For a brand new foil, I think that uh, an average person should expect to spend anywhere between $1,000 and $1,500 on a, a decent foil kit that's going to be all carbon, it's going to last them a long time, and they're going to be able to use it well. If somebody calls the shop though, Rob, I usually have some sort of a kit that I can bolt up for people that's going to be a steal of a deal because it's floating around the shop. I've used it for lessons a few times or if you tug on my heartstrings on the other end of the phone, sometimes I just want to see somebody get a really good deal. But uh, we can, I, I've, I've sold foils as, as low as five, six, seven hundred bucks. That's insane. But I, I think that's actually a good way to go, guys, because there's only so much I can cover in a in a little video, it helps to call someone who can work with you and say, oh, this is the right foil kit for you. 
is it something you you want to grow into or is it something you just want to throw away and move on to the next one josh can can sort it out for you there's only so much i can general information i can give you if you buy like a used kit like you you know, it can be good. A fo buying a used foil is better than buying like a used wing, but you still have to worry about like, are the the screws torqued too hard? Is that going to pop off in the middle of the ocean? A That's lot of people are thing, looking you know. to get top dollar. They want to recover as much of their investment on yeah. the used gear. Sometimes we can get you brand new stuff for right next to what you, you might pay yeah. for some used gear. Yeah. And this isn't like an ad for like, this is an ad for Josh a little bit. Like obviously I, I, I you know, Josh and I have a good relationship, but like, I think the used gear market is kind of like ridiculous. Like I see wings on there for like a thousand dollars that have been used for like a season. And I'm like, guys, come on, let's talk about wings really quick. Yep. And then uh, we'll get out of here. I'm the wing man. We got to talk about gotta wings. Got to talk about the wings. Josh doesn't carry a lot of wings in his shop, but there's a reason. There's a reason. What's the reason? The reason is there are a ton of different wing manufacturers and I partner up with other shops and other warehouses in the in the area. So if you called me and said, I want anything, something made out of a Lula or whatever, I want this wing, can you get it? Absolutely. Send me your address, I'll grab you the wing, I'll shoot it right over to you. If you walk in the shop and expect me to have it on the floor, I might not. We're also excited to give really good deals. So when I get really good deals on wings, the wings you see in here are usually really inexpensive. I'm trying to hook up people that are trying to get into the sport, which is a good majority of who's coming in here. Yeah. Well, let me, so let me talk about that. Okay, I'm the wingman. I would love to ride Core Halo Pro wings in every size, every session. It's two thousand dollars at least for every one of those wings. I pop wings very quickly, and also wings wear out very quickly. So I don't. I've resorted to buying pretty much the, the cheapest good wings I can get because I want to try tricks and do stuff. And here's the thing, a couple of years back, yes, if you bought like a Nash 6.8 from 2001 or 2021 or whatever, that was not a good wing. I see people still selling those wings to other beginners for $500 online. I see it all the time. Right. And then I see them out there on the water and they can't get up and they're like, but I'm using a 6.8, this is a big wing. I'm like, it doesn't matter, it's not a good wing. In the years since then, since like the Cabrina Mantis V1 mm -hmm. came out, wings are just a lot better now. I don't know a brand that's making a bad wing in 2023, 2024. Well, for example, I've got Duotone Slicks for 300 bucks. I moved on to the Slick SLS um, last year. It's, it's still the boom, but it's a different material. Yeah. And I was doing freestyle on it. I bought a set of three. I loved them. And I, I, I busted them all in, in six months. But for learning, <laughs> you don't need that, that wing. You just don't, guys. Right. You need a, the right size. Okay? Yeah. So I would recommend if you live somewhere windy, maybe a five. If you live somewhere not windy, at least a six to learn. I think it really helps to be overpowered with the wing when you're first learning because it gets you on foil. And that's mm -hmm. what everyone wants to do. You can always move down from there. You're going to need a couple of wings. That's another reason it's good to get a little bit cheaper wing because you're going to need at least two, like yeah. maybe a six and a four. That's what I started out with was like a six and a four. Yeah, we say a four and a six if you can afford two wings. If you can't afford two wings, then we'd steer people towards a 5.5. Because here yeah. at Cabrillo, it's 25, it could yeah. be 30. And once you get those first few flights and you know how to get up on foil, it's like, all right, we don't want to be, you don't yeah. want to pull people's arms no. up. And at Josh's size, a 5.5 five is going gonna, is gonna to work. Oh yeah. At 200, 220, you might even need a seven or an eight. Don't be afraid to go super big. If you're, look, if you're 230, 240, get yourself a seven meter or an eight meter even to start. I know it sounds crazy, but being overpowered will help you. Now, if you live in the gorge, don't do that. Right. In the gorge, it's windy all the time. You don't need that. I had to remember that the wing needs to be big enough for you to be sitting down on the ground and hold the wing. And it's, it needs to lift you up out of exactly. the water. It needs to lift you up off the ground. So you have to factor in your body weight. That's basically yeah, you what do. I, a lot of times the, 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 the fitter, young, younger guys, I don't know if you're younger than me, but you look younger. They don't, they don't think about that as often. Like it really is a big thing for, for weight. Weight, you're, you're, you're on an airplane wing. If the airplane's got too much weight on it, it's not gonna take off. Hey, that's why you gotta pay extra for your bags if they're too heavy, <laughs> exactly. right? But you know, you have this, uh, let's see if I say it right so Patrick doesn't come out of here again. The Takuma. Takuma. Takuma, dang. The Takuma. You got the Takuma Tanji, which I think is a really good wing. It's got, this one has hard handles. Yep. 
And it's it's a great price that Josh is giving these at. Yep. And I've even thought about getting a couple. Patrick, you guys do unifoil here. Yep. Patrick can get uh, pinions. We can ship pinions to anywhere in the country. We can ship these uh, Takuma uh, Tanjis yeah. anywhere in the country. We've got old RS wings that are even better deals we can ship anywhere in the country. Yeah. I've got suppliers that just have stock of really yeah. good product. I prefer the Takuma with the soft handles just because it just feels good on my hands yeah. when I'm out there. No, I, I like the soft handles too. If you're a surf guy, if you just want to get up and surf, the soft handle is really good because it's a little bit lighter weight as well. It's great for learning. You're not banging up your board. And if you're a windsurfer, you might want that hard the hard handles. Sure. I've been using the Wilf, uh, the AFS Wilf, yeah. which I think is a great beginner wing. Uh, I've been using it like in more advanced situations. It's a better beginner wing, to be honest, um, but it's got soft handles and it really just wants to fly. It just kind of wants to fly. Josh can get you those as those well. Those are the same thing. We ship them all over the country. Yeah. That's another reason, I, I forgot to mention that. That's really the reason we don't stock a lot of stuff is because um, we're drop shipping this stuff from yeah. the, the factory itself or the warehouse straight to you. Unless you live in Southern California, um, we, we just ship right to the, yeah. the customer and they get it really quick. And look, guys, Josh can get you, uh, I think you can get Core, right? Um, yep, you can everything. get F, the new F1s just came out, the V4s. You can get the, the high-end Duotones that are $2,000 plus. Dollars. You can get this for them, right? Anything. My suggestion, don't do that. Like you just don't 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 do it. Yeah. Get something that's the right size and a fairly new model. And you know, Josh won't steer you wrong. He'll get you a good wing, and uh, learn on that. I don't think it's going to hold you back. I really don't. I think you will blow up or destroy your wing in some way before you outgrow it. Is my guess. Mm -hmm. That's true. But you know, I I always almost pop mine every time I walk out into the water so <laughs> and we're going to talk about that in a future video how you can keep your wings safe one thing i'll touch on real quick i'm a big fan of sanding your foils i know like the prone guys and the sup guys want to be like the most efficient foil possible to protect yourself and to protect your gear learning i think it really helps to sand at least the edges of your foil i even sand the trailing edge of my foil yes i lose a little bit of glide and and Efficiency, you got the wind to power you up. Exactly. Yeah, you're not you're not manually powering no. your foil, so that's and if great. You, if you get cut on the you know face or leg or whatever, you're going to be out and you're not going to be able to learn. So yeah, I think that's pretty much everything we need to cover here. Josh can also get you. Uh, he's got the Kaohi leashes. We'll throw a little we'll throw a little plug for Kaohi in here. Roy, yeah. Roy's a local guy. I just saw him this morning out at Seal. Um, yeah. He makes these leashes. Josh can uh, get you a leash. You do need a leash to when you're starting at least. Um, and then you, you have always like, need a leash. I think you always need a well, leash. Well, for freestyle, you don't want that leash. <laughs> well, fair. Yeah. Yeah. Straps can um, somehow. With the wing, I don't know if you know this. You can do the um, body drag. The body drag. Yeah. I don't know if you've been doing that. I did the body um, drag last time I lost my board without a leash. And I kept dra dragging myself. And it was the wing was right behind the board. And it kept bumping the board farther and farther. And I couldn't lift the wing up oh, to it's... like get the board. Like it was, <laughs> I was at the last second. I just couldn't do it. I, I've had it happen. There's a couple of times where I've had to go into the beach and get my board. But uh, um, Josh also, he's a Cedrus dealer. Uh, if you want something that's going to just work um, going forward for no matter what brand you want, they have a really nice new mast. Josh can get you. They also have even an aluminum one, which is fairly cheap. Um, Josh has some other soft goods as well. Yeah. Uh, he can get you the downwind boards. But yeah. I think uh, what you're saying, Rob, what I'm hearing from you is in each category, boards, foils, wings, accessories, hardware, all the stuff, there's a million options. Yeah. And there's a million combos for how all that fits together. And so whether somebody calls me directly uh, and talks to me or Patrick or somebody that we work with, or they're calling anybody else at their local that's willing to spend some time and guide them through the right setup. Every person's different. Every wing spot is different. Every wing discipline. You're doing freestyle. I, you know, uh, Richard wants to go fast. You know, there's everybody does different stuff, and we should be steering people towards a product that specifically fits yes. their style, their family, their their who's who's riding the gear, how heavy they are, all these different things, and. There are, there are reasons. We don't just pick wings because it's our, made of, with our favorite color material, you know? I do like a good looking wing. Though. I do too. <laughs> um, but, you, yeah. you know, Josh makes a great point. Yes. Yeah, so if you want to get so something from him, call him up. He'll set you uh, up with the right gear. Go on to the Wingman Foil Club forum. 
I put this video, I put every video up in this series up there. Come in there, ask me what gear you should be riding. It's free online coaching there, guys. I'm free yeah. online coaching. I don't know how to, it seems like a pretty good deal to me. I don't know, uh, take advantage of it. I will tell you exactly what, what you need. Uh, if it's used gear, we can talk about that, or I can set you up with a, a package from Josh. So um, sure. yeah, and like, subscribe, share, follow Josh's uh, YouTube. Yeah, the yeah. foil shop. Peace, guys. <laughs>